All right, we are here for the second to last day where you have less than 24 hours until the very last problem. All right, today we've got hail. Hailstones flying in perfectly linear trajectories. We get the position and velocity here. Each line corresponds to the position and velocity of a single hailstone. Positions indicate where the hailstones are right now at time zero. Velocities are constant. Indicate exactly how far each hailstone will move in one nanosecond. Each line of text uses the format XYZ, XYZ. After one nanosecond, the hailstone would be at 21, 14, 12. Okay, perhaps you won't have to do anything. How likely are the hailstones to collide with each other and smash into tiny ice crystals? Is that just the dot product? To estimate this, only the X and Y axes ignore Z. Looking forward in time, how many of the hailstones paths will intersect within a test area? The hailstones themselves don't have to collide, just test for intersections between the paths they will trace. In this example, look for intersections that will happen with an X and Y position at least seven and at most 27. Point of intersection, okay. However, you'll need to search a much larger test area if you wanna see if any hailstones might collide. Look for intersections that happen with an X and Y position east at least. Wow, okay. How many occur within the test area? So I think these are vectors, right? So the point of intersection of two vectors is a solvable thing. So for us, we require X and Y to be equal. If you've got seven, three, negative three, one, and negative two, five, one, assuming they're linear, we just solve these equations over and over for everything. So let's, I guess, start with parsing as we always do. Grab this, just create day 24, part one, drop in our input. So at least we have to parse the point of origin and I guess the directional vector. So if we do a non parser, we've done a lot of these, so I'm not really gonna explain it at the moment. I don't wanna reuse the word vector, so I'm gonna use hail, starting position, IVEC three, direction, IVEC three, separated list one, line ending, separated pair. I'm gonna call this IVEC three, tag, space, at, space, IVEC three. This is gonna take the input, but we're gonna map over the parser. You can just copy, paste, 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 paste. And then what are these? These alternates are tags, right? Complete from character complete, tag from bytes. I result is not done yet. Zavec of hail, I guess. Fill struct fields, we get the map. We didn't pull in parser yet, so it's gonna complain about that at some point. Let's just do that now. Then we need glam because I always use glam if we're working with this kind of directional stuff. I don't know that we're gonna end up using glam in the end, but we will for the moment. This is okay, input IVEC three, new X, Y, Z, underscore Y, underscore Z. Next test, part one, day 24. I guess this is gonna be a tuple when it comes in, isn't it? Save that. Run our parser, get a debug in here as usual. Implement debug on struct because we're gonna debug, we gotta debug. And then the parser is wrong because where's the input? Separated list of comma space effectively, then space at space, and then this looks weird. Is that how it is in the input? Yeah. So this is not gonna be uh, a tag. This is gonna be a tag terminated by some space. And then we get everything. So we've got 19, 13, 30, negative two, one, negative two. And the last one is 12, 31, 28, negative one, negative two, negative one. So we're missing the last one because of the at space. This is gonna be one of those where we do variable space all over the place, delimited space one tag space one. And now we have 20, 19, 15 as our last one and one negative five, negative three. Cool, so we've got all the positions all the directions we're moving in. We've effectively got vectors. We need to solve the equations or the intersections. So if we have the intersection of two lines in vector form, then we have a line x1, y1, so x, y, plus some value times the directional vector. And then L2 is x2, y2, plus some value times the directional vector. Then we're looking at potentially Kramer's rule, which indicates that the matrix of the directional vectors time, or is that a dot or is that a times, equals x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. Another way to think about it is areas for segments A, B, and C, D. The fraction along A, B at which the intersection occurs is equal to the area of the triangle A, C, D, divided by the area of the quadrilateral A, C, B, D. Huh, and the value we actually need here is the intersection point crossing at x negative two, y negative, 
or why three. Okay, so today was a day in which I turned the recording off. I went, I learned some stuff and we solved the problem. So in my head, this setup is a set of vectors, right? And we have to find the intersection of those vectors. So I went and I learned some stuff about how to set that up using matrices. So if I, so there's this matrix crate called ND array, right? And then there's another crate called ND array lin -alge, or linear algebra. And this is the same thing we did the other day manually. I think it was day 21. I can't remember exactly, but there was another day that we used basically the exact same equation, this matrix A or the inverse of matrix A times X equals B. And that day I did it all, it got messy. And then I worked it all out at the end. I don't think I actually presented the answer to that day in that video, but the code is written. Yeah, this is definitely, so it was definitely, um, day 21, we ended up with a Vandermond matrix and we inverted that and we multiplied it by something to get our coefficients. This process here, this matrix that gets inverted and then multiplied is this, this A times X equals B situation. So ND array Linalge has the ability to solve this without us needing to do special stuff or custom code. We need to set up our matrix and then we need to set up our column matrix, and then we can call solve into. And this might fail because there might not be an answer. So we have to deal with that. And basically what I just did is spend a bunch of time learning how to set that up. So in our case, we've got these gigantic bounds, right? We got, first of all, parser. Part one, parser, separated lists, line endings, all stuff we've seen before. Uh, space one for all the spaces because there's arbitrary amounts of spaces. We're parsing in as I-64s now because these numbers get very, very, very big. And what we get out of that is hail. So a starting position that is an I-64 VEC3 and a direction that's an I-64 VEC3. And you can see that from the input, we get the starting position and we get the direction vector, the direction that we're moving in. This gives us the slope of the line that we have to actually coordinate to find the intersection of. So we basically have a bunch of line equations in the form vector and starting position. I coded this out by hand first. So I have this hard coded solve intersection and manually I took each of the equations or rather each of the vectors and their directions and I wrote out the equations and I manually did the math and then I figured out which of these was going to be the answer and I plugged those answers back into the equations and made sure that they got the right intersections. And then I took that and I brought it to this more generic solve intersection, which uses the ND array and ND array Linalge crates to do the solution in the same way. So we've got hail one and hail two, right? And we need to build our matrix out of the direction vectors effectively. So we've got hail one X and negative hail two direction X. We've got hail one Y and negative hail two direction Y. This is our 2D array. We're working in two dimensions. This is our 2D array. Our column that we're multiplying by then needs to be the starting positions. So the starting position X minus starting position X or the second one minus the first one. Same thing for both of them. That's it. That's how we set this up. So our matrix is made out of the direction vectors and our column is made out of the starting positions. We can then call solve into, in this case, I've hard coded these two hails or pieces of hail. So we know it's always going to succeed. And then we get these two values out. So we get a single dimensional array. Those two things should be equal. They, it turns out they aren't always because they are uh, 0.333333333333334. So float issues. And then I wrote this hail one at function to take that and give us back the point at which we are intersecting. So these gives us back the value, one value for the first equation and one value for the second equation because we're treating these vectors as equations now so that we can plug that into each of them. They should result in the same point, which means we have an intersection and this at function ends up being the starting position X, Y plus the value that we are passing in. I'm calling it scalar here because I didn't have a better name multiplied by the direction. So we start somewhere and we move some distance over some time using our direction. And that is the point of intersection. So we can set up a system of equations. We can solve those linear equations. We get back basically the time value more or less for each of the equations. As long as we plug these values back into those equations, we have our point of intersection. Given these time values and the points of intersection, we're gonna have to do some filtering, which we'll cover in a second. But basically they both have to be in the future. So greater than or equal to zero. So we start off with parsing, we get to our bound. We iterate over each of the hail in some combinations. So it's 
AB and AC and AD and so on and so forth. Basically all the combinations of two pieces of HAL from our HAL vec. I then run a filter map. I take the first HAL, we solve the intersection with HAL2. So I took the code that we just covered before and I put it into this function. This function is a function on HAL that takes a second HAL and returns the values we need. It returns the solved values for X, for Y, well, not for X and Y necessarily, but for the first equation and the second equation that we need to plug in, as well as the plugged in value for one of the equations. So we get the intersection value. Given those, we have the HAL, we have the other HAL, and we have the intersection, which gives us those three values that we just talked about, the two solution values and the actual intersection. Once we have that, we need to check to see if the intersection value is in the bounds that we need to check. So it's within, I don't know, two quadrillion, billion, whatever, I don't know. It's a number, it's a big number. I copied it straight out of the text. So if we're inside of this and we're inside of that for X and Y, and we're in the future, so our solved values for time are greater than or equal to zero, then we have valid answers. With those valid answers, we just need to count the number of them and we're done. NDRA Linalge, basically an advanced version of what we were doing the other day by hand. And now we've got part two, <laughs> which I think I saw somebody throw up some question marks earlier. So part two, upon further analysis, it doesn't seem like any hailstones will naturally collide. I guess that's why we weren't doing all three <laughs> uh, X, Y, and Zs. It's up to you to fix that. You find a rock on the nearby ground. If you throw it just right, you should be able to hit every hailstone in a single throw. Okay. I was, okay. So I literally have a book called Geometry for Programmers on my desk right now. This book, it is this book, Geometry for Programmers. See if I can look at the table of contents. I was reading this book to see if I could find uh, any insight earlier. And on page something or other here, on page 50 in 3.1, it introduces something called a hyperplane. Now this is obfuscated for some reason, but I'm looking at this on the website and it matches what I have in my hand, it looks like. And it basically says that there's a way to take what we just did, which is the intersection of two lines or two planes and expand that to any dimension using this equation right here. So any linear system is a system of n-dimensional hyperplanes. So with a small variable substitution, we can turn any linear equation into a hyperplane equation. And that's this, this is the hyperplane equation. So B equals negative A sub N plus one, where N plus one, I believe might be the dimensionality. So it ends up being something like this, AX plus AX plus and so on equals zero. Okay, that's looking like something we might be able to deal with. Anyway, I've never done that before, so let's keep reading. Uh, you can probably use the probably magical winds to reach any integer position you like and propel the rock any integer velocity. Now, including the z-axis in your calculations, if you throw the rock at time zero, where do you need to be so that the rock perfectly collides with every hailstone? Due to probably magical inertia, the rock won't slow down or change direction when it collides with a hailstone. Wait, it doesn't say at the same time. It just says perfectly collides with every hailstone. So it looks like this isn't hyperplanes. So we need a line, I guess. In the example above, you can achieve this by moving to position this and throwing the rock at velocity this. If you do this, you will hit every hailstone as follows. Time, 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 time. Okay, so we need to hit everything, but we don't need to hit them at the same time. So we need to find an equation that doesn't exist, but we do have a ton of other equations. So how do we set up this system of equations to solve? I assume it's solving a system of equations here, right? Because given all of these, we have that hyperplane equation. So what do we have? If we have all of these equations, then we have a set of equations for which there needs to be a plane that crosses all of them. This is the equation we were just looking at earlier. So let's, let me bring that in. Well, let me, I guess, copy everything over <laughs> first. And then let's bring this hyperplane equation in. Cause I feel like this is what we have to do. We've got this equation, a1, x1, what yada, 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 but we don't need, we don't need it to intersect everything at the same time. This person says the left side is essentially just the scalar product of the vectors and x's, but the scalar product of two vectors is zero if and only if they are perpendicular, sure. So the set consists of all the vectors which are perpendicular to the vector a, all the vectors that are perpendicular to the vector a. So really, I guess we need this, but we need to solve it for B. So it's gonna be all of this minus B. I'm pretty sure this is what we need to do. So I'm gonna go do a little bit more research and then I'll come back. 
Okay, well, part two. This is going to be super unsatisfying. <laughs> uh, it is 3 a.m. I've been up for the last six hours doing this. Easily the longest I've spent on an Advent of Code problem all month. Was it worth it? I don't know. <laughs> but I have my star. So here's my answers on the left. And then I had to take them together and add them. And I had an extraneous decimal place here for some reason that I had to round up because the dot nine didn't count, but 12 here did. So I've got a lot of notes <laughs> on mathy stuff. I've got some equations here for various ways of representing this. I've got too many windows open. This isn't even the only desktop that has windows open on it. TLDR. Um, there is a linear equation solution and it kind of hinges on the cross product and some insights about like moving the equations around. So more, more or less, it was the same approach as in part one. So the part one approach, if you did it in a linear algebra way worked out, right? We talked about this already in part one. I think I can't remember. It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but this code is the exact same code I used for part two. It just got very much more complicated in terms of the algorithm. And the lines started getting so long that they were like wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. So I uh, did some stuff. Anyway, if you take at least three of the positions from the hail, then you can construct a set of equations. In this case, it's a six by six matrix and uh, a six column column matrix. And we do the same linear equation solving with some really big numbers. This stuff comes from these equations. I'll check this in. I don't know if it's gonna be useful for anybody. Um, hyperplanes, I don't know what I was doing there. Seems, seems fine. It was okay. Um, we'll put this in day 24. I'm just gonna call it research if you would like to see it. Um, this is not an explanation. I think I just accidentally added something to get rid of that. Oh, that's auto adding that? Ew. Um, save that without formatting that's really unfortunate um but yeah so anyway we get equations that are somewhat like the hailstone starting position that we're looking for right plus the time times our hailstone direction oh this really messed up uh that's unfortunate oh this is going to be much less useful did that happen when i turned it into a markdown document oh no got rid of my history too oh well oh i think we're good there yeah okay okay that's better anyway so our, our hailstone starting position plus the time in our direction gives us the location of our hailstone that we threw. And that has to equal a number of different uh, other hailstones at the same time, right? So like these T's are the same. The T's have to be the same and the um, cross product works out to zero. And if you work these through enough, so there's only three equations up here, but remember that each of these equations has like X, Y, and Z to it. So it's really like nine equations. I think you could do this with nine equations as well. Um, where was I? But yeah, my grasp on, on this is loose, I will say. And then you have to construct all of that um, into these matrices and then you can get the solve and then it will give you uh, the positions and the velocities. You can see from my answer here that mine aren't quite rounding correctly. So that's unfortunate, but it didn't cause me too much of an issue. So counting it as a win. There is, I've looked through the answer thread now and there is at least one person, two people who are doing linear solutions. There are quite a few that are just plugging it into Z3. So I'll leave a link to this one because I think it's one of the more helpful ones. And I know I'm not doing a good job of explaining what's going on. So I'll leave this comment in the description if you wanna click on that. I'll see if there are any more before I post. And that's it for today. I am exhausted. It's been six hours. I will see you for a happy day 25. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day. <laughs>